Jesus. Oh my god, I slept so much today. Bruh. Okay. Alrighty. Alright. Hello. Hope it was a good nap. Oh my god. I have no words. I slept way too much the past few days, guys. So freaking much. That just stand stream knocked the wind out of me. It knocked me out cold. Cold like this heavy cream. I'm about to make quite a few Italians angry today, but I it cannot be helped. This is how I like my carbonara. This, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I know how to make carbonara traditionally, but I will not. Hi everyone, hello, welcome to the stream. Oh, I should, I should tweet that I'm live. Eat er. Carbonara and seasoned eggs and cookies. All right, hi everyone, hi. Hello, 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 it's been so long because I've been knocked out. I, my muscles, okay, so today was the first day I woke up and I didn't feel any pain in my muscles and I'm like, wow, yes, I'm healed. But turns out I am still very much not healed. <laughs> but for the most part, at least my, my muscles don't hurt anymore, which is good. Um, this reminds me of my auntie. One time my auntie, she went out to pick berries um, and apparently it was like the most exercise she's ever done in a really, really long time. So from being a housewife that like barely goes out to going outside to the fields and picking berries for hours and hours at a time, she too also slept in for three days pretty much. She was like knocked out for a couple days. And I'm like, is this just my fate? Is this my fate? No, I shouldn't curse myself. I should really ought to, you know, this is a sign that I need to implement more uh, like physical activity within the week so that I become more and more used to this. Hi everyone, it's so nice to see you guys. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome to the stream. It's been a while. It's been a couple days. <laughs> guys, yes, I love this so much. It came in the other day. I'm so happy. This is um, my friend Alyssa. Uh, she makes the cutest self-defense uh, products and this is the coolest thing ever. Okay, look. So you take it out like this and then the middle button doubles up as a flashlight. Ooh. And then the the most upper button is what turns it on and then you can press the, uh, the button that triggers the, the taser. So I'll be bring- oh, that smells. I'll be bringing this to TwitchCon. So, any any of you guys uh, plan to pull something funny? I I, I got I got my self defense item, and his name is Cheese, and he shares the same horoscope as me. He's also an Aries. I love Alita's stuff. Me too. Me too. I love it. I love her. And you guys, if you guys want to look for self defense items, I highly recommend it. And it doubles up as a flashlight, so it's perfect. I love it. <laughs> um, Blitz says, teach me. Thank you so much for the two months. Teach you what? Teach you, teach you carbonara? 
because that's what we're doing today. We'll be making pasta. Guys, I ate nothing today. I woke up today, had coffee. Oh my God, it fits on the pumpkin. It's so cute. All right, I woke up, I had coffee, and then I knocked out pretty much. Cleaned my apartment, and then I knocked out. When I cleaned my apartment, I was so excited to stream again. I was like, oh my gosh. I also got help from my, um, I got help from my previous house cleaners. Are you free tomorrow at 12? Yes, yes, I'm free all day for you, Lily Chance. <laughs> I'm gonna see Lily tomorrow too. Chris, thank you so much for the three months. Hello, hello. Hi everyone, self-defense is important. It really is, it really is. You can never be too careful. And it doesn't matter what gender you are, what your build is, you never freaking know. So these type of things are um, encouraged in my opinion. I like it. Okay, wait one sec. I need to make sure my webcam stays in focus. Uno momento. Darling, thanks for the 13 months. Are you ready for TwitchCon? No, I am not ready. Guys, I'm cutting it so close. It's insane. Guess what? Guess what? Chicken butt? No, actually, um, my merch has not come in yet. It has not. And it, that's like the scariest thing for me is not having anything to show at my booth. So, apparently though, they're confident that they can get it done in time, but... Um, it's literally around the corner and I don't have it yet. So, yeah. Yes, I do have a meet and greet. I have a meet and greet for Saturday. Saturday at 3.30. Whew. <laughs> it's my first time ever doing um, an official Twitch meet and greet. So, I am a little nervous. A lot of people are nervous that no one will show up. But for me, I'm like... I'm like... Mm, what's the word? Maybe that's a good thing for me at least if no one shows up to my line because this is how I see it If no one shows up to my line, that means I can run away. I can run away quicker and go back to my booth <laughs> Yeah, so no Friday. No, so Friday I'll be at my booth Your line is gonna be long. I don't think so You wouldn't be offended if no one shows up. I think I wouldn't be offended because I have how I've seen it is I've kind of been at like, okay, this sounds really sad, but I'm not, I, I'm not, I don't mean it to sound sad, but like I, all my friends have always been way more popular than me. So I'm so used to like standing in the sidelines. I have like a ma like major imposter syndrome where I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't deserve this. Or like, or like, you know, I'm not, I'm not like big, you know, so <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird that people want to, want to, want to say hi. Like I'm just, I'm just. It hasn't hit yet that I'm anything. But anyways, <laughs> you guys are too sweet to me. All right. Ooh, guys, I bought this fancy stuff. I bought this pancetta a la, a la pia. I got this huge chunk from, what is it called? Italy. Yeah, it's from Italy, so you know it's good. Gosh darn. And I literally picked through the entire like basket. There was a huge, huge basket of this stuff. And <clears throat> um, I literally had to go through every single one because I wanted to have the perfect meat to fat ratio. Um, I know that it is very popular to just render off most of the fat, but for me, I'm just like, mm, eh, eh. I'm actually not the biggest fan of like super, super, super greasy uh, bacon flavor. Um, I, I like a balance. So that's why I found the perfect piece. Look at that, guys. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. And I can't wait to cook with it. Uh, do you prefer pancetta or guanciale? So the guanciale pieces there, I did take a look at them, and they were just like 90% fat. I wasn't a fan. So I went for the pancetta today. It literally is all aesthetic, but also fat ratio of preference. And sometimes you're unlucky and you, get, you don't have like the best bunch. So that's how I feel, sort of, is what happened. All right, and we're going to put on some music. Can you guys hear it, or should I turn it up? Thoughts? Can you hear it? Okay, I'll turn it up a little bit. Up, please? Okay. You can? All right, can hear. Okay, perfect. 
Thank you guys. Okay. All right. Making carbonara, yes I am. You guys wanna say hi to Instagram for me? Say hi to Insta. <laughs> Hello, I'm live making carbonara. I always feel bad doing it too early. Okay, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Cause like now I see you guys all saying hi. Okay, okay, okay. So they're starting now. Woo! We are live with Carbonara. Come join. <laughs> Thanks guys. Oh, thank you for the bits. Bruh, you guys are insane. Thank you. I, I feel like I always miss it because I because there's a delay. I'm that's I'm sure that's why what it is. But anyways, I need the show must go on. The show must go on. Let me quickly link my stream onto my Insta. But thank you guys for helping me out with that. Clicky here. All right, uh, for, fair warning guys. This is my third time mentioning it, but I can't help but need to mention it. Uh, P2 Prime, thanks for the four months. But yes, um, oh, there's no water clips. Oh, schnapples, okay. Right, let me fix that real quick. I was going to say, um, I'm about to make quite a few Italians really angry because I do add cream to my carbonara. It is not traditional to add cream to your carbonara. Um, yeah, but for me, I like my pasta extra creamy. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so don't be angry. I, I do know, uh, I'm admitting it right now that I know it's not, it's not a thing. It's not supposed to be a thing, but I do it. I saw we, all right. I've enabled clips. Uh, store pass. All right, publish, publish VODs. Oh crap, I hope I did it. All right, I hope I did it. I think I did it. I think I enabled it. Hopefully I did. Authenticity is overrated. I agree. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's, cooking is like an art form, you know, it's subjective. All right, so first of all, let's start by making some pasta water. Yes, -ums. Hello, pollution, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back, hello. Nice to see you all. Wait, thanks for the 26 months. Oh my gosh, all these all these subs. <laughs> Thank you. You're gonna need to, this vlog to make carbonara tomorrow. Nice. Nice to Carbonara is very, very, very easy to make. Um Yeah. Especially the way I do it, guys, I'm telling you, my carbonara is just bursts of flavor and super, super, super creamy, and it is so far from authentic, I I am almost ashamed to call it carbonara. To be honest, I should not call it carbonara. I should call it carbaria. No, that doesn't work. Um, but let's say, not only do I use heavy cream, but I also use the Asian chicken bouillon as well. So yeah, shame on me, but I can't help it. I just love flavor in anything I do. 
All right, this is the fancy stuff. I've actually, I don't normally use. <gasps> Musashi Water, thank you so much for the money. If I get the subs, thank you. Thank you, guys. Whoa, so many subs today. Sheesh. You guys miss me or something? You guys miss me or something? <laughs> All right. Normally, what I use is I use bacon. Straight up bacon. So... You, too, can use straight up bacon is what I'm saying. You do not have to go out to buy the fancy stuff like I have today. You really don't. All right. However you cut up your slices of pork, I should say, um, make sure it is even through and through because we are going to cook this down, render off the fat, and if your pieces are different sizes, obviously they're all gonna take different timings. So we wanna prevent that by keeping all of our slices uniform, roughly as much as we can. Alrighty, I will do six slices. Wow, this looks absolutely beautiful. I am so excited. Oh, this smells so good. Oh my gosh. I don't want to eat more than this. Should I eat more? No, I shouldn't. Yes, I should. No, I shouldn't. All right, I'm going to freeze this. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm going to make this more than once. I mean, within the week. So I'm going to freeze this. Two more? No. Are you gonna make a traditional recipe for carbonara? No, not traditional at all. So far from traditional. Like, your Italian grandma is about to beat me. Like, no, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't call this traditional. It's far from it. Anyways, I'm gonna freeze this. Guys, one thing about living alone is you just, you have to get into the habit of cooking enough just for yourself. I have had the habit for the longest time to always cook for others. <laughs> Me plus more. And it's bad. It's a bad habit to break out of. Because now that I'm living alone, I, I sometimes will still be, you know, going overboard with the amount that I cook. Anyways, we're going to cut down these pieces into these cute little strips. And that's how I'm going to do my pancetta. Cut it however you like though. Um, I did notice like in anime, um, they actually keep their pork slices on the bigger side, which I think is actually very aesthetic. I've never done it myself, but yeah. My fridge is full of leftovers the same. Same, but I'm trying to break out of that habit and so far so good. I've been pretty successful as of late, but it did take me a long time to get there. <laughs> it's like cook for just yourself, Arya, dang it. I'm so used to like cooking big pots of things, you know? And especially back then when I had roommates too, I would always like cook for at least two. Okay. I need to sharpen my knives. Monka. Yes, I do cook a lot of Vietnamese foods. A lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. All right. To this, I'm going to add my fancy pasta salt. I got this at some like fancy uh, kitchen supply store. It's literally just sock, well, sock, salt rocks. But apparently it's meant for pasta, so. All right. I put three small crystals in there. on low, low medium, because I still need to prepare everything else. 
garlic, yes. I have so many freaking... Guys, I have way too many shallots. I feel like I should use a shallot. <gasps> I have too many. I have way too many shallots. I'm gonna use it. I love shallots, so do I. Ayo kanashimi. Thank you so much for the two months. Welcome back. Thank you. I love garlic so much, guys. Like, I mm, love it. someone in chat was like appalled by the amount of garlic I was using <laughs> and then they literally said they're gonna leave my stream and for me to enjoy my garlic breath and I'm like <laughs> you know I can't even be mad at that because it's true I will most definitely have the gnarliest breath but why are you so mad about it like chill you don't have to put that much garlic. Like, I'm not putting a gun to your head saying like, this is the way and the only way. I just love garlic. Anytime there's a recipe I read online and anytime I see like two cloves of garlic, three cloves of garlic, I'm like, mm, no. Nope, I'ma just triple that real quick. Like always. <laughs> Chatter was probably a vampire. Yeah, probably. That, 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 would, that would make sense. <laughs> Triple? Yeah, I'm not afraid. I'm simply not afraid. All right, pancetta here. Any Anything you use, to be honest, with, with the whole uh, pork belly business is going to be very, very high in fat, so don't even worry about greasing the pan. Um, once you put it on the pan, it's going to start to um, render, and then you'll see how much of the oil actually comes out. It's, it's quite alarming, so. Don't even worry about greasing your pan, is kind of how I do it. I have so many shallots from last time still, so. shallot juice in my eye and I'm just pretending to be a real strong girl right now Ugh. it's definitely in there Monka. oh goodness not the shallot spicy juice though oh god I completely butchered the chopping of the shallot, but that's okay. Ugh. We're gonna do a fine mince anyways. Oh god! Oh no, I didn't run out. Good. 
I just have a lot. All right, today we are using spaghetti. Use about a little bit, like a little bit bigger than a quarter size for one serving. the vent on just in case so my my smoke alarm doesn't go off and then for the garlic I'm just gonna going to do rough slices because I actually like my garlic chunks to be bigger when I make pasta You can also do large slices as well, but I'm going to do a coarse mince. Eh, this is enough. I don't need to do the rest. Your pasta water is bubbling over like that. Just give it a quick blow. Oh yeah, that's a box of smart popcorn that I bought. I saw it on sale. All right, I'm gonna turn up the heat. Oh my god, it's smelling so fragrant and yummy. Yes, I did lower the heat here. But anyways, now we are going to create our, the wet mixture. Okay. So we are going to add one yolk. And one full egg. Uh, Dreezy, thanks for the prime, thank you. Have a great day, Mario, thank you. Thanks for stopping by. So the trick is I don't want the garlic to burn. So that's why I have the heat on kind of low-ish. All right, next I'm going to grate my teeth. I have the uh, 
Parmigiano Reggiano. Hopefully it's not moldy. I don't know. Poggers, it's not moldy. <laughs> Whew, that is dang. We got our cheese. We are going to greet however much our heart desires. So I'm gonna say at least a quarter cup, at least, minimum. Oh, I broke it. She's a little crumbly, Your Honor. Starting to take on a lovely color. You're looking beautiful. Be very careful when using a grater. It's very possible you can grate your fingies. You don't want to do that. Right when I said that, the cheese broke. <laughs> Okay, that's looking pretty good. In goes the cheese. All right. Here's where y'all gonna get mad at me but turn away if you're not into interpretations and uh, non-traditional means like if I were on MasterChef right now I'd probably be eliminated for what I'm about to do Wow that pork smells absolutely stunning but you know what could pair with pork? Surprisingly, chicken bouillon. Yep, you heard me. Chicken bouillon powder. A little bit of salt. A little bit of sugar. To balance that flavor out. Black pepper. And I like to add the dried parsley as well. Obviously, if you have fresh parsley, that's even better, but I have dried today. To be honest, if you're if you're lazy but you want hella flavor, like me, garlic salt works as well. This is gonna be super flavorful. Super, super flavorful. All right. It's starting to take on the color I like. Now, we're going to test out our spaghetti to see how done it is. Because 
I don't know. Ready. It is al dente right now. Italians don't use garlic. Yeah, no, like there's, just don't, just, uh, yeah, just don't, don't consider this carbonara to be honest. I sincerely apologize. I just am crazy when it comes to flavor. <laughs> Well, preserve some of that pasta water in another bowl. I always do this. I always like drain it and I forget about the pasta water. Don't do that. All right. Preserve some pasta water. Strain out the rest. Woo! Sheesh. Free facial. <laughs> All right. And there we go. absorb all of that delicious pork garlic shallot flavor Another huge Italian no-no, but I'm going to add some cream to this mixture to make it more consistency I prefer. Just a little bit. Not too much. Ah! Alright, we're going to give this a mix. How dare you be creative? Chill, chill. <laughs> I'm gonna give that a taste. Oh my god. So freaking good. Mm. I like it. All right. We're gonna put everything in this bowl. Yep, you heard me. Everything. And then we are going to coat it. Let the heat from the pasta cook the egg and the cheese and the cream all together. Wow. This looks perfect. All right, I'm gonna give it a taste. Mm. Oh wow, oh wow. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add a little bit of uh, pasta water to make sure that the sauce and the pasta are together and it makes it nice and creamy and slick. I'm gonna add a little bit more cheese. I think it needs a little bit more cheese. I'm a huge fan of this cheese.
All right. <clears throat> I'm going to put it back on the pan. I'm going to turn off the heat because I had it on while this was waiting. You're going to heat it up very slightly. And you're done. You don't want the pan to be too hot. I had it on the lowest heat setting. Otherwise, you're going to make scrambled egg pasta. You don't want that. <laughs> I was just heating it up to make sure everything is flat. Okay, I'm just going to put it on top. No finesse here, but guys, I haven't eaten all day. It's a giga sized portion just for me. All right, we're going to finish it off with more cheese. Because what can I say? I love my cheese. Ah! It looks so good! Okay, wait, 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 wait. And then... Finish it off with more parsley for that green and uh, this basil. Beautiful. Her carbonara. Her, I, I should not call it carbonara. It is so far from carbonara at this point because of all my. Uh, my creative mix-ins. But yes, I kid you not guys, I have had self-proclaimed carbonara like haters eat this and actually like it because, because this recipe doesn't focus too much on the richness of the egg yolk. It focuses more on just the salty flavors of what um, pancetta or bacon and chicken bouillon has to offer and lots of garlic flavor too so it still has the essence of a carbonara but texturally and flavor profile speaking um, it's not as like rich I would say it's more savory so any of you guys that are not a fan of egg yolk this is a, a good entryway but anyways <gasps> I'm gonna have some ninja milk. Woke up from a nap, I'm a little bit groggy. All right. Mm, this looks so good. Oh my gosh, this looks so freaking good. Guys, this is, okay, honestly, it's, it's a little bit of a big portion, so I can't say it's like Master Chef presentation, but, oh God. The pasta is perfectly cooked al dente. And all the cheese. And the richness of the yolk. With the chicken bouillon. Mm -mm -mm. Alright. Cheers! Actually, no, 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 no. I can't take the first bite. You guys have been waiting. You guys take the first bite. Ah! Ah, 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 ah! Mm. Holy crap. Shh. 
sheesh. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna eat this whole thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat this entire thing by myself. This is so freaking good. Mm. My gosh. The pancetta has like this smoky smell to it. Mmm. Completely elevates the dish. Anytime I want to quickly impress my friends, carbonara is my go-to dish because bacon is like a staple in many households and garlic salt, believe it or not. <laughs> garlic salt and bacon is all you need. Mm. Mm. There's so much flavor. Traditional carbonara, you would use a lot more yolk and obviously without the help of chicken bouillon powder, you're strictly you're strictly keeping the flavor profile to just yolk and cheese, pretty much. And that's like pretty much rich on top of rich. Some people are super into that, but I know a lot of people that aren't. So that's why I created this version. Or adding chicken bouillon can make you cut down on the yolk. And adding heavy cream will complement your amount of cheese. Mm. So good. What brand of pasta do you recommend? <clears throat> um. This is the cheap stuff. I'm pretty sure this is like Barilla or something, but I promise you guys, pasta is all about how you cook it. You can use cheap store-bought pasta like I did, where the box is only like a buck, you know? Or you can use fancy pasta. Regardless though, it is very important that you taste test your pasta a minute before you think it's supposed to be done and when you're going to pull it out because pasta can turn from al dente to cooked cooked very fast and if you're going to make a recipe where you have to put the um, pasta in another pan that's heated you are more most likely going to overcook your pasta and overcooked pasta no matter how much money you spend on it is going to taste bad in my opinion yeah, mushy pasta is very sad, indeed. One green tea, thank you so much for the three months. I remember in my cooking class, my instructor was telling us, she's like, yeah, this is the one time, the one lesson on pasta where a food fight is okay. And what she means by that is there's like this test where you can test if your pasta is done by throwing a string of the spaghetti to the wall. And apparently if it sticks, it is proven to be al dente. I don't know how true this is. Do it. Oh well. It's not gonna work with sauced pasta. You need to do it from the pot. <laughs> Regardless, it's just fun. Yeah, I guess. Y'all too troll. <laughs> yeah, I have white walls. I'm gonna lose my security deposit. They're like, so what happened here, miss? And I'll be like, ooh, yeah, mm, science experiment? <laughs> mm. 
I remember the wine stains, guys. I got the bill to see what they did to my apartment. And they charged me for two things. Two that are very stupid, but whatever. I'm not going to even argue it because I think it's just bad juju at this point and I'll just give them their money and let them go. I'm not for justice anymore. I'm tired of my previous apartment. But anyways, they charged me $550 for a repaint. They even wrote hyphen kitchen. So it's 100% those wine stains. <laughs> But why the heck would it cost $550? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure it's like maybe maybe the whole apartment. Because usually when it comes to apartments, they do a repaint anyways. I just didn't know it'd be like... It'd be like... I don't know, that much. But anyways. Hmm. Painters aren't cheap, yeah. I don't doubt it. And then, they charged me $150 for a freezer clean or something like that. But you know what was so funny about that? Oh gosh. Oh, Microsoft Defender. Okay, anyways. Um, they found frozen food. I think I, I think I left like a bag of dumplings or something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But I'm pretty sure I left like maybe one or two things in there. And then the hyphen, they hyphenated it and they were like, did not defrost food and toss out, blah, 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 blah. Like they made it sound so serious. And I was like, all right, you're charging me $150 for this. Like, goddamn, you're welcome for, for the free snack. I got charged for giving away food. <laughs> it's too funny. <clears throat> it's okay. I learned my lesson. <laughs> you missed how I made it? No worries, the VOD will be published. Super easy to make. What is your favorite dish to make? Mm. I like low and slow broths. Like so, bum bao hui pho. I actually have not yet made ramen. I still need to make ramen. I want to make ramen on stream and I want to make it out of chicken bones because my favorite ramen of all time is a place called Santoka and what they do is they use chicken bones so their ramen just tastes like ramen I've never had before which I really appreciate I feel like a lot of the ramen spots do, they're they're decent but the reason why they're kind of on the mid portion is because they all taste the same. <laughs> you kind of know what to expect from a, a traditional tonkatsu broth and it's just a matter of like how rich it is or how salty it is or you know what I mean it's just I don't know to me it's just not appealing because I always also feel like crap after. The first bite is always heavenly don't get me wrong. Every time I, I, I go eat ramen the first bite of ramen I'm like oh yes but then when I finish the bowl Garamatiat, I want a nap and I feel almost regretful. <laughs> so. Yes, yeah, so my favorite ramen is Shio ramen, which is just salt in Japanese. And I can't wait guys, I'm actually going to Japan after Thanksgiving. I'm really, really excited. I'll be going with Trisha. And she's bringing an IRL backpack. So, I'm really excited. You guys are gonna get a lot of Japan content from the both of us and I'm so excited. So, so, so excited. Mm -hmm. She's gonna show us 
her favorite spots because she was there for two years for her Le Cordon Bleu training. Yes, Japan's officially open, guys. It's amazing. Um, I think we're going to stay in Tokyo because that's where she's most comfortable. But a part of me also wants to try out Osaka because all of my friends that went to Osaka are saying that they prefer it over Tokyo. So that's really, really exciting. Oh! Velvet, thank you so much for the raid. Sheesh! That is a big raid, thank you! Osaka is the best food in my opinion, yes. And I, we are both huge, huge, huge foodies. Um, so I'm really excited for that. I just want good food, good vibes, and yeah. Velvet raid, thank you, Velvet! I hope you had a wonderful stream. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We are currently headed into the mukbang portion of today's stream. Um, earlier in the VOD, I created this, um, I should say my take on carbonara because it's so far from a traditional carbonara, but it has all the essence of a carbonara. And then after I finish this, we're going to head into making some seasoned eggs, which is why I have my eggs here. Um, they were cold from the fridge, so I'm going to make sure they're room temperature. Um, I, I wanted to make this because uh, I need quick meals. So I wanted to try making seasoned eggs. I remember Hune making seasoned eggs, and I was like, okay, I need to try this. So this is my first time making it. Um, but yeah. And then afterwards, we're going to make a quick dessert. So some kind of cookie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you recommend taking cooking classes? Oh heck yes! I think cooking classes are one of the most fun classes to take, especially if you have like a friend or a partner that want you want to do it with. Um, it just it, it makes for a lot of fun teamwork. So yeah, if you have a friend that wants to like that may be curious, I highly recommend you do it with a friend. Or if you do it alone, it's actually guaranteed that you work in a group. I don't normally see cooking classes where you cook alone, so yeah. So you can also make a lot of new friends too. <clears throat> you love how I style my hair though, thank you. Secure some tomato soup. Yum. Corson or Danish? Oh, I'm not sure what a Corson is, but I know what a Danish is. I don't think I have time for a Danish. Uh oh. It's happening again. Guys, what does it mean when every time you eat, you feel like you need to sleep? I think I've been sleeping on average like 14 hours a day. It's bad. I know it, I mean, yeah, it, it is food coma, but I've never had it this frequently before. Back then I could eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and still be like fine afterwards. More coma on the dinner side, but like my breakfast and my lunch are okay, but nowadays I need to sleep after every meal. Old age? Whoa! Need to check your blood sugar diabetes? No! I mean, you're probably not wrong. I, my family definitely has a history of diabetes. Oh God. It's all the rice we grew up on, guys. It's all the rice. How could this happen to me? <laughs> you should get tested for sure that. Uh, no. Wouldn't that mean they have to prick my finger? But they have to pr prick my- I hate it. I hate the feeling of getting pricked.
No, I literally could be eating anything. It's not just carbs. I could be eating simply just meat and I'll, I'll still knock out too. <sighs> I'll eat, I'll even eat a salad and I'll knock out. It just happens after every meal. I, I feel a little slow, I feel a little sleepy, and then I knock out for like four or five hours. <laughs> It's due to insulin spike. Oh goodness. How do I help that? Yeah, Twitch chat doctors. Help me out. High blood pressure. Mm, my doctor usually tells me I have naturally low blood pressure. So what does that mean? Morning jogs. Eee. Cardio and lots of water. Eee. Cut down on the portions. No. That's the worst thing you could tell me is to eat less. Oh, hell no. I'm gonna eat what I wanna eat. <laughs> Lunch with a small coffee. I see. Yeah, this is my small coffee right here. Though she's not so small. Hmm. I see. I see. The more I see, the more I don't want to see. Uh. You know, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. games out coming out in October? Not that I know of. I actually don't remember. I think all the cool games come out in November. Like the new Pokemon. Really excited for that. November is gonna be crazy. Overwatch tomorrow. Overwatch? Wait, Overwatch 2? I saw that they have this new, um, like this fox character. She's like a healer. She looks really cute. I like her. And she kind of looks like Diva. <clears throat> wow. That was delicious. You like Overwatch? I Yeah, well, I used to play it a lot when it first came out. Overwatch was so fun. But I think what happened was I... It, it just felt like a little repetitive for me. Like, goddamn. If I have to push one more payload. <laughs> I would be so down to play more Overwatch if my friends were down to play it, but yeah. Finish your food, lol. Okay guys, I have this thing where... <sighs> so, I'll, there are times where I'm like craving meat a disgusting amount, all right? I would literally be like, I need to eat only meat. And then after I do that, I have a period, AKA right now, 
where I'm like, I don't want any meat. I'm lazy. I don't want to chew it. I don't want to see it. I like it for its flavor, but I don't want to eat it. So that's kind of me right now. I'm in my, my vegetarian phase. <laughs> I mean, I could eat it. It's fine, but I'm like, I'm lazy to eat it, if that makes sense. In Vietnamese, I would say gang and pit, which that's what it means. It's like, you're kind of just like, eh, when it comes to meat. You need alternative proteins. I'll survive. I had, like I said, I have weeks where I'm like, I need meat. And then I have weeks where I'm like, meat, <laughs> you know? So, it's, I'll be fine. Persona 5 Royal comes out on the 21st. Oh, of October. We'll play that. I'm down. If you're not lazy to stream though. Okay, being, all right, streaming and eating is like two different things. All right. It is time to make our seasoned eggs. I'm excited. Pick the meat out, eat the rest. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I just got like the short noodles left. I pretty much ate everything. October is pretty bare for games, really? Why? Why does why do games just want to come out in November? Sag. Bring it to TwitchCon. I'll eat it. Ew. This won't be good by, by then. You're so silly, Jojo. All right. We did it. We ate. But I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little cold mud. All right. What should I do? <laughs> oh, I bit the fork. Does that trigger you? Okay. Closer to the holidays, people buy gifts. Oh, that's true. That's true. I suppose it. Dance a little bit? No, no, no. If I dance, I'll just knock out, knock out. Too tired. I can't dance on a full stomach, to be honest. Speaking of dance, I don't know if you guys missed it, but if you missed it, then you missed it. But I had an impromptu Just Dance stream. And it was no regular Just Dance stream. It was a dance-a-thon. And your girl danced for nine and a half hours. She was live. Crazy. I danced. <coughs> to 72 songs. Honestly, the cra probably the craziest thing I've done in a while. It was epic. Yeah, it was kind of epic. Is there gonna be a YouTube VOD? I sure hope not, because that would be scalping, but I don't think there will be only because Just Dance is a tricky, um, it's a tricky game where all the songs are like DMCA-able. So it's hard to get like a full VOD in without, you know, getting in trouble. Yes. Do I speak Vietnamese? Yes, I do. To my family, yeah. But anyways, why don't you upload it? Well, because it's, 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 a, it's a little embarrassing for me. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of the times, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a little drunk or something, or I feel a little delusional, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm just a troll, you know. So uh, I, it's hard for me to watch myself do that kind of thing. <laughs> it's like watching yourself being a clown, and I'm just. I'd rather not. And also it's kind of ex it's kind of nice that once in a while it feels exclusive for the people that, you know, do have me on notifications on or whatnot. I mean, you don't have to watch it. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It will just be a secret thing between me and you, the live audience. Yeah. Um, you're Vietnamese. Nah. What do you mean, nah? What? Huh? Anyways. I was going to say I want to make seasoned eggs. Yes, but what should I, what should I make for dessert? I want to make cookies. Originally, I was going to make this cake, but I 
Okay, I have these melons. Okay, I, I want to make cake, but I think I should do it tomorrow morning. So then I can give it to my friends. Because I don't want to eat that whole cake by myself. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are too sweet. All right, it's time to start. You guys think of a, a cookie for me to make. A type of cookie, any type of cookie. Damn, y'all got the 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 um, suggestions already ready. I like it. I like it. S'mores, brownie, peanut butter. Okay, okay, okay. Alrighty, time to make these eggs. <sighs> strawberry, mmm, I don't have any strawberries, unfortunately. <laughs> Snickerdoodles, ooh, I do like me a snickerdoodle. Double chocolate is also pretty yummy. Chilies in your cookie? Nah. I'm not making any special kind of cookie. All right. I'm gonna boil the water for the eggs. All right, uh, let's see. I actually don't remember what's in this marinade. I don't remember. I don't. Uh, my brain is kind of... Guys, I'm food coma. I'm food coma. Oh, God. Oh. All right. So I think what goes in here is Chinese cooking wine. Urgh. Some uh, soy sauce. I'm going to put some dark soy sauce for color. Regular soy sauce. Rice vinegar too. Uh, oh, what's dark soy sauce? It's a high concentrated version, and it's mainly it has a much deeper flavor, but also it's for the color. It's a lot darker. as well. I'm gonna 
add some sugar. I have like no sugar left. God damn it, cat hair. Got it. Soy sauce cookies. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Not soy sauce cookies. Cat hair for texture. Oh, hell no. No, not the cat here. Okay. So I'm gonna add a little bit of MSG as well. Mmm. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. I also want to slice some shallots in there. That knife is kind of cheesy. How many of you guys are going to TwitchCon? I want to know. <laughs> Not the bookie flavor. <laughs> wow. Right off the bat, we already have three, four people. Sheesh. Not me, I am not. Oh. No. <laughs> There's always next year. It's okay. TwitchCon is not that fun. It's, it's, it's not that great or anything. going to put in the white part of the green onion only and the green part is for after cut off the little tail parts and then cut out the white parts like so I will go in there delicious Beautiful. Now we cut the green parts finely. This is moving too much. Wet paper towel underneath should stop that. Lovely. I need to sharpen my knives. <laughs> They're so dull. Like, bro. <laughs> I'm slicing it and I'm watching it not slice as well. I have to go in again. It's kind of bad. Don't be me, guys. Be more diligent when it comes to your knives. You never want to have to saw green onions, okay? <laughs> Alright, I have my chilies 
And I can't really eat too spicy, so I'm just gonna cut it in half. If you can't eat hello spicy though, go ahead and cut it into slices and like, you can even put it into the sauce while it's boiling to bring out even more flavor. But yeah, I'm gonna cut off the tails. The water is now ready for the eggs. I'm gonna make one, two, three, four, uh, five. Let's make six. Yeah, I will make six eggs today. Thank you so much for the sub. Welcome back for four months, thank you. Do you have a sharpening steel? I definitely do have something to sharpen with, but yeah, I'm I'm the worst. I am the worst. Alrighty. Oh, I forgot. I need to salt. Salt the water. All right. When the sauce is simmering, go ahead and turn that down. We're gonna make the water nice and salty. It helps with the peeling process afterwards. We are going to cook this for exactly five minutes. Because we want runny centers. Alrighty. Five minutes. Yes, we are doing jammy eggs. They're going to be nice and jammy. Uh, timer. Five minutes. Here we go. keep the eggs from exploding um well chances are if you drop them at too high of altitude they will um crack and that's how they explode really um so yeah that's why i used a ladle but you can use a ladle you can even use like a sieve like one of those sifter thingies um yeah as long as you can just Oh, you can even use a bowl where you put the eggs in and then you lay it in the water and let it down slowly that will help. Just don't drop it into the pot. Yep. Gotta do it gently. True. All right. Now that the sauce has heated up and all the sugar parts are dissolved, I'm gonna grab a container. Huh. We're gonna let this cool and oh yeah this is where we can add our green onion and our chili. There we go. Nice and colorful. Nice and flavorful. Mm. I think it needs more sugar. Smells really intoxicating. Smells very concentrated. 
definitely think it needs water. <laughs> but anyways, it does smell good. Stop cooking the eggs. This is true. Your butcher read the tags wrong. I got twenty dollars of ribeye for six bucks. Sheesh. He got lucky, huh? Hopefully he doesn't get fired for that. <laughs> okay. What's the timer looking like? Oh, 20 more seconds. So excited. Oh. It's time. Yay. Ice water we go. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> I totally forgot. I think I have to put garlic too. How could I forget the garlic? Arya, you're trolling. You're literally trolling. Time to add some garlic. I hate peeling eggs. I seriously hate it with passion. <sighs> but that's okay. Hopefully with the salt water and the ice bath, that should help us peel our eggs. Should be easier with those two extra steps.
garlic. I do want a spicier taste, so I'm going to mince this a little further. the shells in for calcium. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Might not be very visually appealing to see a bunch of like shell and eat it too. Not a fan of shell, I have to tell you. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go ahead and taste this because I actually have no idea what it's tasting like, but I assume I'll have to like it if it's gonna be marinated in it. Mmm! That's so good. Delicious. All right. We're gonna transfer her over into this container. Get all the goodness. It's going to be the marinade. Thank you so much for the resub. All right. The part I dread most. Oh, guys, that was so easy. Hey, wait a minute. That ice bath. The ice bath plus the salty water. That was so quick. And the egg, um, the shell is not sticking to the white egg whites at all. Hey, wait a minute. That was kind of easy. Yes, and we I know we cooked it right because I'm feeling the egg and right now it is she kind of bouncy, you know, like it's not stiff, which means the yolk should be runny on the inside. Feels perfect, guys. She's she's got she's got some she's got some some bounce. All right, we're gonna clean her off and lay her in there. Oh my god, I'm so excited! Can't wait to try this. Newer eggs help too. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't say these are new. <laughs> I think I've had these from before I went to Vancouver. <laughs> but yeah, this is really good. So easy to peel, wow. See, if egg peeling went like this every time, I wouldn't complain so much. Now I know the strats, guys. Well, I mean, I always knew the strats, but I've never had it this easy. But to be fair, I never had access to that much ice. Like, this ice machine has been a lifesaver. Okay. In we go. I should have made more eggs. Oh god, did I crack this? Oh god, I may have... Uh. <laughs> they don't all have to be beautiful, right? <laughs> Careful when when uh, cracking these eggs, when smashing them. But yeah, they're just so much easier to peel. Very good. So yes, guys, salty water and an ice bath. I want to know 
know how machines do it. You know, uh, for example, when you go to Costco and you can get boiled eggs by the bag, like there is no way there's a human peeling all those eggs. You know what I'm saying? There has to be a machine way that peels these eggs. I'm so curious. They use air? Huh? I gotta watch that. I gotta see how it's made. Gotta watch some how it's made. Literally, I love how it's made. I used to watch that with my dad all the time. One of our favorite shows. One of our, fa one of our favorite like family shows to watch as a family, or mainly just with my dad, is How It's Made, um, Iron Chef, uh, the Japanese version, and um, oh, Fear Factor. And just for laugh gags. I don't know if you guys ever watched that before. It's like a pranking show, a mute pranking show. Like they don't talk in the show. But it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, good times. Yeah, they actually have like a more updated version of the show now. I saw it um, when I was on the plane actually to Vancouver. It's very advanced now. Play on Canada TV networks. Yeah! I was born and raised in Canada, so. Yes, we watched, actually we watched some America's Funniest Home videos as well. But for me, it, it, I think America's Funniest Home videos is like either a super hit or super miss. Cause for me, I never really found joy in seeing people in pain. Cause you know how they have a whole compilation of just purely like accidents? And for me, like, I never laugh at those. <laughs> and then the, the audience is like dying and I'm like, but how about the person in the video? Like, are they okay? I, I never I never found someone else's like pain in that kind of way funny. Oh my God, Bob Saget being the host. I do remember this. Alrighty, the eggs are in guys. I think I should have done like maybe two more eggs and then because the more you stuff it obviously it will the sauce will rise to the top but that's okay if it doesn't hit the top that is fine. You can just you know just keep it um I think you can just use saran wrap here. Yes. How long do you marinate the eggs for? Um, I think the eggs can be eaten within the, uh, the next hour or so. But you can do it overnight and you can keep them in the fridge for a few days. Because this is like... The marinade has like, uh, like a lot of high salt content. And then things with high salt content will keep well in the fridge. Especially in an air sealed environment as well, like this container. Wait! I remember there's a strat for this. I remember. It's not actually. It's plastic wrap, but there's another, another strat. It's paper towel. Because I remember this girl, she took paper towel in the video. She folded it and the reason why this helps is because the paper towel will absorb it no matter what and it will keep the sauce at the top. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Smart. So smart thinking. Perfect. Now the paper towel has absorbed the marinade and it will keep the top of your eggs coated. <laughs> Ricky thinks it's three months in using your prime. But anyways, we did it. Marinated jammy eggs. Ah.
All right. Have we figured out what we want to make? Oh, <gasps> I saw this recipe that looked insane. <clears throat> but it's not cookies. Guys, I never stick to the plan. I always have a plan and then it never, it's never the original plan because I'm just so impulsive, especially with the way I think and talk and act. But anyways, guys, there's this recipe that I saw that looked amazing. It was brownies, but not just any brownies. It was brownies that she put a thick, 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 thick layer of chocolate ganache on top and let it set till it's completely flat. It looks absolutely stunning. It also looks like it could probably give me um, a century worth of uh, cavities. Um, so, hmm. But I do think the aesthetic might be crazy. Especially with like flaky salt on top too. Hee! Okay, okay, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I also bought a new pan. That's a very cute square shape. Shall we do that or shall we do a heart shape or a circle shape? I'll oh, definitely square. I think square is where it's at. Hmm. Where'd the pan go? Huh? I just bought it. Where'd I put it? What the heck? I literally held onto it and I'm like, oh yippee, like I'm gonna be using this soon. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, one thing I will never forgive people for are putting stickers onto these things. Like why? You know we're, we're about to put it in the oven. Why would you why would you make us suffer by putting stickers on the outside and they're not the, the good kind of stickers either that will come off in one go. Like it's torture. Yes, this is a deep dish pan, which is going to be perfect because we're going to layer ganache on top anyways. So, yeah. Yeah, no, this is hell. <laughs> this stupid sticker. I hate these kind of stickers. Stop making them, would ya? <laughs> oh, oh wait, I got it. I did it. Oh, oh my God. <gasps> Finally. Oh, Pogger. Pogger, good sticker, good sticker. I spoke too soon, not bad sticker. Okay, we did it. It came off in one piece. Alrighty. Let's give this pan a quick rinse. Yes, it's a clean rip. All right, <sighs> let's clean as we go, just a little, just a little bit. to make cookies but then I just remembered about this random like brownie recipe I saw and now we're making brownies so hope you're okay with that what is a brownie what are the types of brownies and um, what can you do to make sure that it is the kind of brownie that you want at the end of the day so brownie is a essentially a chocolate cake but it is on the fudgier side it's going to have some less starch less flour but it's also going to have a lot more fat and sugar so it's 
it's basically a fudgy cake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we actually, depending on your recipe, some will call for leavening agents, but it's actually quite common to see brownie um, batters not have leavening agents. So meaning no gas to make it rise because some people want that dense, fudgy taste. Um, but if you want a cakier brownie, then obviously you can add your baking soda, baking powder, whatever your recipe says. And yeah. So today, we are going to keep it as fudgy as possible because we are going to do the chocolate ganache recipe like I've seen. And because we're doing this chocolate ganache, we are not going to be adding any chocolate chips or any, any like chocolate chunks because we want it to be as flat as possible. We want as little rising to the brownie as possible. We want it to be flat. And then we will pour the chocolate ganache on top. If we add chocolate chips to the batter on top of that, it's going to be overkill. It's gonna be way, 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 way too chocolatey in a bad way. We, we, we don't want it to be so bad to the point where we can only eat a bite for the night, you know? All right. So. Um. To make the batter, you can use real chocolate. You can melt it into the, the batter, but you can also use, you can also use uh, cocoa powder, which is very common. Very, very common. Um, let's see. All right, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna quickly look for a recipe. Fudgy brownie recipe. Whoa, this looks delicious by Tasty. All right, let's, let's see, let's see the ingredients. Oh, this one uses fresh, okay. Sure. Yes, and it's perfect. This is the one where I do not want any leavening agent and perfect. There is no baking powder or baking soda here. This is the recipe we're gonna use. We're gonna use the fudgy brownie recipe by Tasty. You buy the cake mix? Yeah, the cake mix is totally worth, yeah, you could use cake mix too. But um, cake mix does have like baking powder or soda in it. So when you make it, I actually suggest you can add melted chocolate into that batter and it will make it more dense. All right, yay. All right, we need to melt this though. And I need 12 tablespoons, this is eight. Actually, Oh, I can make this. I'm gonna cut the recipe, guys. I'm gonna cut it by a, a, a quarter. Yes. Yep. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this in my head. <laughs> this box is gonna fall. Holy crap, this is this box is hanging by like come down. Woo. Okay. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I just don't want it to take me by surprise. I'm sure you that's what you guys want, but guys, I've had I've had enough fails, okay? Like I'm I'm, I'm I, I can't. I can't do with any more failures. I cannot. <laughs> All right, so let's get this show on the road. Let's do a double boiler action, also known as a bain-marie, where you boil hot water in a pot 
and then we'll have our bowl on top of that. And we are solely going to use steam to melt our ingredients. We're going to use seven ounces. Hmm. All right. We'll just use the whole thing. <laughs> A little extra chocolate won't hurt. A little extra won't hurt. Baking is a science, and here I proceed to do everything that's not. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to melt the butter. Oh, where's the other glass bowl? Uh oh. Huh? Did I run out of glass bowls? I'll rinse this one real quick. You made it just in time for brownies. Hope you like brownies. All right, we are going to melt this stick of butter because this calls for melted butter. Nothing fancy, just in the microwave. Ah! <laughs> I need to stop leaving things on the floor. Like I really do. Anyways, I'm okay. Forty second intervals, otherwise, you're gonna have a spark happen. Next, we're gonna need one cup of sugar. Nice and melted. I like it. All right. To this, we need a cup of sugar.
To this we are also going to add one egg. I'm also going to preheat the oven to 350. All right, let's get beaten. We are going to beat this until it gets light and fluffy. Nano, the thanks for the 10 months. Thank you, thank you. Yes, wireless hand mixer is a game changer. No wires, it's great, I love it. You do have to charge it though. and fluffy looking. That's what we want. Now, our double boiler is ready for our chocolate. I'm going to turn the heat down to low and this is where we melt our chocolate. I like to use a rubber spatula with some, ow, ow, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I can hurt. But anyways, um, we don't wanna use too flimsy, uh, flimsy one. I like to use a more substantial one here because then we are going to also fold our um, our mix with the dry stuff with the same one. So anyways. <laughs> so yes, we're just gonna spread out the chips so that it hits a hot bowl with more surface area and just let it sit for like 30 seconds. And then once you go at it, everything will melt a lot easier. Um, in that case, we will get the dry ingredients prepared. Do, do, do. Cocoa powder, all purpose flour, okay. All right, we have some flour here. And cocoa powder, well. Uh oh. I definitely have some. Oh, here we go. So 
Since we have extra chocolate, I'm actually not gonna use all the cocoa powder we need because we have extra chocolate already. And we're going to use um, about, I would say a little bit more than half a cup of flour. Yeah. And then just a tablespoon of cocoa powder. to need some salt three quarters of a teaspoon of salt that looks good and that is our dry mix and we're going to have to sift this in as well yeah and that's everything super easy all right let's check up on that chocolate ah yes that's exactly what we want to see the chocolate is melting so easy Looks good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're gonna keep it on the heat until we see only, I would say, 10% of the chips left. Because there's still gonna be residual heat on the bowl left over, and we do not wanna over heat the chocolate because it will curdle up and get all gross so we don't want to do that see i only see a couple of chips left and that is when i will take it off the heat like now turning off all right we're going to do the rest of the mixing until we see that it is completely smooth. It's looking good. All right, that looks great. Thank you for the subs, guys. Thank you. Welcome back. Scrape off the chocolate. All right, next we're going to add this. rubber spatula to get all the mixture in. Scrape everything. Alright, that looks good. Up, guys, Congress. All right, so make sure you whip this until it looks like it's all the same. And this is the last time you can incorporate as much mixing as you as you want. The 
next step, you have to be very careful not to over mix. All right, I'm happy with this texture. I'm gonna taste it. No, oh, death by chocolate. It is delicious. Yummy. Wow, that is so good. Why don't you want to overmix? Because when you overmix, you're going to create a lot of air. And like I said, today we are making a fudgy brownie. You don't want too much air. We want it to be dense. Adding a lot of air would give you like a cakey brownie. Some people like cakey brownies, but today, because we're going to do a really pretty ganache top, I just want everything to be super fudgy and flat. So. To aid in our mixing process, we are going to sift our dry directly into our wet. Beautiful. All right, before I get to folding, I'm gonna have to prepare this pan properly. Um, we have parchment here. How am I gonna do this? Is it, should I do the liner method or should I do the... I'll just do the straight across method. Okay. So what I'm going to do to line this tray, I'm going to flip it over to the back and I'm going to cut exactly its width out of this paper. Where's my skizzers? Here they are. Yes, I finished with the carbonara. It was the first thing I made today. So once we have that measure, it should go in like so. Perfect. Then we're gonna do it again for the other side. I eyeballed it. Oh my god, I did it! <laughs> I eyeballed it from the slicer. And it looks pretty accurate. Yep. Nice. Once we have that as well, I have this spray. You can use butter or pan, any kind of spray. And do not worry about getting the spray on the edges when you make cake. <laughs> I'm okay. Anyways, when you make cakes that um, rise or have like a lot of air in it, you don't want to have the spray touch the edges only because it won't be able to climb. <laughs> I'm fine guys, I'm fine. You don't want the, the brownie to climb at all. You want the brownie to be dense, so it, it don't worry too much if you have grease on the side. This will only help your life to take out the brownie. Perfect. That is looking perfect. 
have our everything is lined and we want it pretty accurate because yeah we just want it to be really perfect so that we can have that perfect flat ganache on top all right now that your pan is lined and ready for the filling that is when you want to fold your ingredients together everything is timing all right guys when we fold we're not trying to over mix so we're just going to do large circles and then cutting it into the center large circle around cutting it into the center all right and what we're looking for is essentially most of the flour is incorporated but if but then we still have some chunks and that is okay because we are not trying to make this batter go crazy we are just folding everything softly gently pressing it in all right and that's what we're looking for we're done stop here see you see how there's still some chunks don't even worry about it just trust in the process of mixing just enough I promise you, you'll be okay. Now we're going to put this into here. Flatten the mixture out. I'm going to make sure there's batter in the corners. That looks beautiful. All right, we're going to drop the pan. Sorry, your ears. <laughs> no air bubbles, all right? Our brownie batter is ready. how long that's going to take us. Oops. It's going to take us about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. 25 minutes it is. Or let's just, yeah, let's do 25. Because my pan is smaller and thicker than theirs. I might even need 30. All right. Alarm is on. Do you chill your batter? Um, not for brownies. Chilling your batter can help bring out flavors, but for brownie, it's okay. Hi! We will not prepare our ganache just yet because ganache, when left alone, it will set. So you don't want it to set while your brownie is still in the oven. So we're going to wait till our brownie is done before we start our chocolate ganache. Chocolate ganache is essentially just melted chocolate with heavy cream. And then it is the base for a lot of chocolate truffles um, or even types of frostings and icings um, require chocolate ganache. 
and it's basically a chocolate that sets but when it sets it's not firm anymore it it's not like hard chocolate but it's more like a fudgy chewy chocolate um, it's like creamy and that will all depend on your ratios if you want it on the creamier side the looser side then you'll add more cream but if you want it on the fudgier texture that has like a bite to it uh, when it sets then you'll want to add more chocolate so yeah that's what we're gonna do after and for this I think we are gonna do it on the slightly creamier side only because that's how we get that super flat top. I, that's that's the appeal to this brownie in general, is that the ganache on top sets so flat. Super, super flat. Um, then we can add our, a little bit of like gold flakes or uh, flaky salt on top to make it look extra bougie. But um, yes. I will show you guys a photo. I took a screenshot of it today actually, which is why I thought about it. <laughs> Look how beautiful this is. Just look how stunning. Isn't that gorgeous? Like it's so flat at the top. And that's just the ganache. My screen is a little blue, sorry about that. But yeah, just so pretty, so flat, yum. Yes, very yum. <laughs> it looks perfect, exactly. So that's what we're going to try our best to achieve today. Um, that's a dream, yeah, for real. Looks like a toy block. <laughs> it does kind of look like a toy. It's it's so smooth. Anyways, we have 20 minutes, and you guys know what that means. We have 20 minutes to clean. Because my apartment right now is so freaking clean. So I feel like I need to keep it this way because when <laughs> your space is clean, you just have a clearer mind. You're more excited to work. You're more excited to just you know, do stuff in your apartment. Don't even nap, no, 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 no. So we have to clean, so let's clean. <coughs> it's not looking clean right now. Yeah, because I just made carbonara too. <laughs> I worked today. <sighs> All right, let's get to cleaning. Monka. TwitchCon is in a few days. My sister's already leaving to San Diego early because she's like hanging out with her friends and stuff, which is actually kind of, it's gonna be rough for me because initially my sister was supposed to um, help me drive up some of the merch, but my merch isn't here yet. So there's a good chance if it isn't here tomorrow, um, tomorrow, afternoon my sister might leave without taking a single box so i might have to take up every single box it might be a little monka and i don't know if i'll make it i don't know maybe i'll have to rent a u-haul and i'll drive a u-haul to san diego <laughs> i've done it before i'm not afraid i'm a u-haul expert i moved my stuff in u-haul and i moved tina's stuff in a u-haul before I've done it twice. I'm I'm pretty much a U-Haul expert. <laughs> pretty much an expert.
I thought there was a spot on your screen, but turns out it was a spot on my counter. <laughs> kind of funny. You have a nice home. Thank you so much. Thank you. You like your new apartment area? Um, it's okay. It's not the best, only because, um, you know, the electricity thing kind of sucks. You know, like I'm genuinely afraid to plug in my KitchenAid because if I plug in my KitchenAid and I have it running, it's proven multiple times to create some kind of like electrical surge that turns off my streams. So it's not very practical for, you know, a streamer to live here. And also the rent is higher than I would like, but I did, to be fair, I did sign my lease during the peak of um, how much rent should cost. Now it's actually a lot, it's more cheap, but it is what it is. I gotta wait out my 12 months here. Do you see yourself long-term in LA? Uh, hint, hint, NYC. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I see myself in New York. I do see myself traveling to New York because I, I do like the vibes there, but um, for me, it's probably between Vancouver and LA. LA because my parents are here, but Vancouver because that's where I was born and raised. And I know, I feel like Vancouver is, is, is definitely a good place to raise your kids. <laughs> but to be honest, I think almost anything is better than LA. Poo poo for the two years. Happy two years. join the stream late no I mean the brownie is in the oven but you're still you're, you're you can still make it for the ganache topping I'm very spoiled with the dishwasher dishwasher is a game changer for sure God 
Dang it. <laughs> I said no accidents and then here I am. Ugh. Anyways. Good. <laughs> Happy little accidents. No, that was a sad accident. Anyways. Twelve more minutes. Thirteen more minutes. On the chocolate brownies. Alrighty. Oh my god, guys, I'm still getting notifications. It's crazy. I made a tweet um, during the whole dream face review, review, <laughs> reveal, and that tweet has garnered so much attention, and it's like, oh gosh. There's like so many things wrong with, with, with the narrative, I can't. The tweet was perfect. I mean, for me, I, I didn't mean it to be so deep. I, I literally was just like, oh yeah, like for a moment in time, yeah, I would not want to be dream right now or, it, or more so it's like, seems difficult to be seeing all these opinions at once. That's all, that's all I wanted to put. But then so many people started coming at me, kind of like, oh yeah, if you're ignorant to the ign to the internet, then stay off, like say all these mean things to me about it. And I'm like, wait, why am I being attacked for this? And I realized it's because some people have already made their opinion on how Dream is as a person, who he is, what he's done in the past. I don't know this guy. You, it literally takes only a second to check. Uh, I don't even follow him. <laughs> like, that's what, that was the whole point. And people were just saying like, oh, some people were also saying you chose to read it. And I'm like, no, that's, no, I, I don't know him. And yeah, I guess that part is right, that I'm ignorant with like internet celebrities, but I don't, the whole point of the tweet was very, very simple at the baseline of it is that having a lot of opinions on someone's looks is kind of crazy. And a lot of people are like, oh yeah, like he deserved it. He deserves this hate. He deserves to be bullied. And I'm just like, that's not my business. <laughs> this whole point is I'm not a part of this. And the fact that I don't follow him yet I see him everywhere. That's like, that's that proves my point even more is that I'm just seeing a lot of opinions on someone's looks. That's it. And for me, that's kind of burdensome. Good opinions or bad opinions, both of them. I'm getting both and it's like a lot. It's like, yeah. Anyways, that's the whole point of that tweet. I just wanted to get off my chest because I was like, why am I being punished? Or why are people hating on me? <laughs> like li literally people were just calling me dumb again or calling me calling me ignorant or calling me stupid or saying, saying they were attacking me or more so disappointed in me that I didn't see, you know, what they saw in him. And I'm just like, it's not really like that. My tweet was just very generalized, but yeah. How dare you have an opinion? I know. I mean, what was it? I think Mer Mer Mercury retrograde just ended, huh? <sighs> that happened during the peak. Yeah. People always misinterpret it. Yeah, they 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 purposely try to misinterpret. I was like, oh gosh. It's the whole, if you aren't with us, you're against us. Mm-hmm, so true. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening either. All I did was I opened Twitter and then everyone's talking about how this guy looks and I don't even really know the guy. So that's why, in general, I made that tweet stating out like, okay, like this can be scary for a lot of people, like expecting the internet. 
And yes, of course, there's so many factors, but Twitter has only so many characters I can write. I'm not gonna write a novel just to appease every person, you know? Like, people are like, but this, but that, he did this, he did that, he hyped it up, it's his fault. I'm like, I didn't say it wasn't. I didn't say, like, I'm not speaking against anyone's opinions, really. I'm just stating my own in that I think talking about how someone looks is like a lot. But deserved or not is what I'm trying to say. It's just a simple, simple opinion. And I didn't know I could like, I don't know what it was about that tweet. <laughs> Maybe it was just the right timing or I don't know. I don't know why my tweet popped off so hard. I felt like it, it was like a war. If you look at the comments, it's, it's, it's a war. It's like a 60-40% war where 60% people are like, he deserves it. He's horrible. You fail to see that he's a horrible person. And the 40% is like agreeing with me saying like, yeah, it's a lot. But <laughs> it was weird. It was a lot. <coughs> Poke the hornet's nest, yeah. People trying to have funniest troll comments to get clout, yeah. It's not you, it's his toxic followers. I don't know what it is. I... I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm frightened. <laughs> I wouldn't overthink it, yeah. I think it just made me so a little sad because I did see like... When I was scrolling through, I did see two people that used to follow me. And I only know this because they have like OTV and friends in their bio and they apparently unfollowed me for that tweet. And they said some like not so nice things in the quote tweet and I was like dang Like am I going to lose out on like community fans over this? Albert, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Thank you. Aw, thank you Yeah, but Apparently like Yeah That's petty They're not loyal. Yeah That's how I kind of try to see it too is that like okay if they're gonna unfollow me for an opinion then they're probably not going, they're probably already looking for something to like, not like me for. So it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I hope this doesn't, or I think in general this, I hope this doesn't um, make me feel more hesitant to speak my mind. Cause obviously like no one wants to be proven wrong, but at the same time, I think like it's pretty important to get our opinions and feelings on things out there. I don't know, that's just me. Have you seen Michael's tweet? Oh, Michael's tweet was so funny. <laughs> I do think the memes are funny, not gonna lie. The memes are definitely funny. But I think some people using it to just like poop on someone and how they look is like not nice. I don't know about deserved bullying. I do understand like m people that should, you know, make up for their mistakes, but that's a whole nother argument. It's like what does someone's looks has anything to do with it? That's just me. Yes, I do have two PCs. I have two PCs. Um, I'm using my older PC for my kitchen setup and then my gaming PC for my gaming streams in my uh, other room. Your tweet wasn't even bad, it was just the honest truth. Yeah, but some people just take it up the butt. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even making an excuse for him. I wasn't even trying to make it seem like, you know, I'm on his side or anything. I literally don't know the guy. I don't even follow him. I was literally just stating the whole like judging someone's appearance thing. It's a lot. And it's easy for other people to hate on and bully because it's not their looks that are being judged, you know? And they, they literally don't have a single photo of themselves uploaded on the internet. Like all these Twitter users at the end of the day, they're all like, you know, they don't show themselves. So they don't. I feel like these people don't think twice to be like what it's like to throw yourself out there to be judged by the internet. Anyways, 
rant over. Thanks for listening, guys. I had to get that off my chest because obviously that was the last thing that kind of went crazy on my Twitter. I've like never surpassed 100K on purely text. Like that was like crazy to me. I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Current events, crazy. <laughs> but thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Good night, pocket compass. Yep, 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 yep. It's a hard time to be factual these days. Yeah, it's a hard time to be factual. It's a hard time to have an opinion, period. There's like no opinion where you won't get pooped on at that moment. <laughs> new Master Chef, when? Um, new Master Chef? Tomorrow night or um, Thursday? Wait, is tomorrow Wednesday or Tuesday? Shoot, I don't remember. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Okay, I'm hanging out with Lily at in noon. And I do want to make the cake beforehand. So in the morning, I will have a cake baking stream. I'm going to bake cake in the morning. KJ Pang, thanks for the prime. Um, yeah. So cake in the morning. And then I'm going to go hang out with Lily. And then when I come back, potentially Master Chef at night. Or I'll just do it on Wednesday. Wednesday for the next Master Chef stream. And then I'll be eating my jammy eggs that we made today. Do early streams like today. Um, <laughs> uh, my streams are so random, but tomorrow for sure I will be doing an early morning stream. I will wake up, roll out of bed, brush my teeth, and start streaming. I promise. I'll be there. Aw, thanks. Remember to hit that follow button and that notification bell button or uh because for me my schedules are <laughs> kind of loose they're kind of loose you know these a little loose but yeah I guess I'll be getting up early for Aria. Oh, it's the... <laughs> the cake I'm going to be making is really, really pretty. I saw it also on Instagram. Guys, this is crazy. I know I've been talking about TikToks a lot, but I think I like something a little more now. Well, it's hard to say I like it more. It's more so it's more catered towards my food content, but basically my Instagram reels is so well catered to what I want to see. Like it's, it's tunnel vision on cooking right now, which I love. Check on the brownies, Aria, yes, yes, yes. But yeah, I've been seeing a lot more like food related stuff on my Instagram. So I've been really happy about that. Oh, brownies look pretty good. I'm gonna skewer check it real quick. Hopefully it comes out clean. Oop, not done. Not done at all. This is a poopy skewer. <laughs> no, no. All right. Um, this is probably gonna need another 10 minutes because she is wet, wet. I knew it's gonna need more time because my, my pan is not as shallow as the pan they used. <laughs> so yeah, this is a poopy skewer. Mm! Oh my God. That is so good. Delicious. I love me a, pu a poopy skewer. Oh my god. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. So, what was I talking about? Oh yes, Instagram Reels. I will show you guys the cake that I want to recreate. And I want to recreate it as accurately as possible actually. Depending if I have the same um, star tip 
Well, I should be able to. This is the cake I'm going to recreate. Isn't she beautiful? It's so beautiful. I love it. I'm gonna do my best and I do think, um, I don't have a spring foam square pan, but I do think I'll, be, I'll still be able to make it. Yeah, she is beautiful. Cute, pretty, yeah, that's so cute. Yes, thank you. Um, hopefully I'll be successful. I did buy some flour press cookie cutters. So I, li I literally have the exact same cutters as the one shown for the little I literally asked for just flowers and then I had to buy the whole pack. Oh, this is, I'm not a hoarder guys, I'm not a hoarder. It's just, it's just Amazon. Like you can't buy things in the singulars anymore. You know, you gotta buy it in the packs. It's not my fault, it's Amazon's fault. Okay, yes, it's these ones. These ones are the exact same ones. I'm not a hoarder, Copium, come on. <laughs> Anyways, these are so freaking adorable. Oh my gosh. Wait, I'm kind of glad I got this pack. There are some really cute designs. Ooh, oh my baby. Oh my god, look how cute this is. Oh, look at the cute little flowers. And then they come in multiple sizes. Oh my god, even the mini stars. I am dead. I love it. I love it. I don't think I need the big ones. Not a hoarder? <laughs> I'm really not. Just it, blame Amazon. There was, I literally tried to look for a singular version of the daisy pattern, but it only came in this big packet. So. They're so affordable too. I hope these melons are still good. Oh gosh. Maybe I should keep it in the fridge. I hope they're still good. Oh yeah, they're, they are they are smelling very ripe. Uh oh. All right, I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Ah! Okay, I'm my kitchen. I actually cleaned my kitchen during the stream and I kept it clean. I don't know, man, guys, I've changed. I've changed. Who am I? I don't even know. Cleaning who dis, <laughs> literally. All right, and I think I am ready to start making the chocolate ganache because the brownie is going to be done very soon. And when it's done, the heat from the brownie is actually going to help set our ganache in a more flat way as well. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Aria cleaning? Whoa. <laughs> I know. I don't know who I am anymore. Okay, I tend to be like this right after like Maria comes. Mar That's her name, my housekeeper. Her name is Maria and I love her, she's great. Um, so far I've only hired her once a month, which is really good because back then I used to be so dependent on her. I used to hire her like twice a week. <laughs> it was really bad. Nimbus, thank you so much for gifting Fiddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But yeah, it was it was really bad. I. I mean, for me, my copium was like, oh yeah, no, I'm like supporting her family, you know? I'm like, I always pay her a lot extra, I tip her a lot. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like for her family copium. But then I realized it was making me practice really bad habits. Like I would deliberately, if I knew that she was coming the next day, I would just not clean because I knew she was gonna clean it anyways. So 
yeah, no, it just left me being a very lazy human. And I, as I told myself, I cannot hire her more than once a month. Because what she does is she's really good at like the deep cleaning stuff too. So she'll get into like the nooks and crannies with her, with her vacuum and her um, mop. So yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So she came today in the morning. So that's why I'm like really excited to work in this kitchen. Because everything's so squeaky clean. So you just have to keep it this way, guys. What? All right, let's see the, the alarm. We have three minutes, but I'm gonna check. Oh geez, it is still so freaking. All right, it's gonna need the full three minutes, I think. Gonna need the full three minutes, guys. That is a very poopy brownie. See, I knew it. When, when it said 20 to 25 minutes, I'm like, there's no way. Brownie batters can go up to like 40 minutes. If it's that wet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add another five minutes. No, I'm gonna add another 10. That is way too wet. All right. <sighs> Sag. Thick brownie, yeah it is. The brownie is thicker because I'm using a more shallow pan. Or oh, sorry, I'm using a taller, smaller pan. Yeah, not happy with that. See, the edges look better, but the center is just completely mush. Hmm. Is it the time or the temperature? It's the time. Because this one called for like, I think a nine inch, but mine is a six inch. So because mine is smaller, the batter is going to be thicker. And obviously that's going to take much longer time. So. Yep. In that case, we have to wait another 10 minutes, guys. We got to. We've got to. we need for our ganache. I'm going to use dark chocolate ganache. Mm. I think the dark chocolate will give off a better color. Do I want dark? Wait, maybe I should do milk. Milk will look creamier. But dark will look sexier. Should I do darker milk? So in the in the picture that I showed you guys, they use milk, so it's lighter. But dark gives like a more mature look. Dark? Okay. Damn. All right, it's pretty. <laughs> can you mix it? I mean, I can, but nah. We're we'll just stick to it. All right. It looks like I don't think I need to pull. Dark, it's healthier too. All right, we'll, we'll stick to dark, we'll stick to dark. I like it, thanks guys. Thank you, thank you. Dark for the gram, all right, all right, we'll do dark. We'll do dark and we'll even add some beautiful gold foil and some beautiful flaky salt. Beautiful, beautiful. Sheesh, 
We got some flaky salt. We got some some gold. What else should I do? I have disco dust as well, but I don't want it to be like too sparkly. I think we should keep it simple. <coughs> what does gold foil taste like? It tastes like nothing. <laughs> Your plants are so cute. What are they called? Um, so this one is a, um, I forgot. And then that one is also it, I forgot. This one is basil. And then those ones back there are pineapple. That are probably never going to grow because I keep on forgetting to go to Home Depot. I need to go to Home Depot and I need to buy soil and bigger pots because they have outgrown their little water jars. But I've, I've uh, not done that. Hello, hi Keone. Nice to see ya Keone. Yes, the gold, the gold is just to make it look pretty, to be honest, but any extra taste to it, not really. Not really. Milk chocolate is so good though. I do love milk chocolate. And the picture um, from the brownies is also milk chocolate. But anyways, we are about the last five minutes of our baking, so I'm gonna go ahead and start our Bain Marie, our double boiler. Once that starts to boil, We'll put the pot on top and melt our chocolate. So our chocolate's here. from work. I hope you had a wonderful day at work, Keone. need cold cream, remember? I hope this works, guys. I hope it looks good. around a third cup of heavy cream a third maybe a little more we'll see we still want it to set and the whole point is that we're setting it the faster we want it to set the less cream we'll use but we also want that beautiful like sheen at the top are we waiting for the brownies yes we are we're waiting for the brownies but we're also waiting for this water to heat up for the bain marie I'm gonna check on the brownie now. Ooh, all right, it's actually getting better. She's still a little wet in the center, but I do like it. Like it's, it's getting, it's like wet and dry. So it probably needs just two more minutes, perfect. I have two minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds on the timer. So that's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna let the timer go off when it goes off. I'm gonna wait till the water is bubbling and then I will add this chocolate on top. Yes. I'm just gonna turn off the heat from the oven, but I also let it sit in there for the full two minutes. All right. Starting to see some some steam. Just 
put the chocolate on there and let it sit for a minute and then we will start stirring and everything will be nice and smooth nice and smooth chocolate yes <laughs> lots of chocolate today Sous vide, good for melting chocolate. Uh, I never want to do sous vide because it's kind of risky <laughs> with the whole making sure the bag is like completely sealed, airtight, water can't go in. I'm, I'm always afraid of like that water can go in and if water goes in, you'll ruin your chocolate completely. Ugh. Okay. Make sure this is completely dry. Any bit of water can ruin the chocolate. Hi, Pookie! Oh my gosh, Pookie has come. Starfly, thanks for the prime. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. All right. Hi, Pookie-chan. Oh my gosh. I love her. She's so cute and precious. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, okay. You wanna watch from up here? <laughs> She's so cute. Okay. It is definitely hot enough. Oh god, it's too hot. We are simply stirring the chocolate, keeping it moving. Starting to look really shiny and pretty. It's exactly what we're looking for. I'm gonna take it off the heat. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna add our cream. Say that's enough. Maybe a little more. Okay. Put it back on the heat. I'm gonna take up my brownie. Two pants, dang it. No, what should I do? I can't really cut it in half. I mean, I could. This is too thick. 
<laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's just, uh, hmm. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have cut it in half. Or maybe I should have like poured it in two different pans. Yeah, she is too tick, too tick. Uh, what's the plan? You know what? I'm just going to work with it anyways. I can always cut it after. No, cutting this would be very hard. You know what? We're just going to leave it. It's fine. It is fine. It is fine. <laughs> oh, anyways, the ganache, yes. Time to work in that cream and chocolate together. On mixing it will slowly incorporate using a whisk here will work too it's starting to look good if you've done it right you'll notice it will become very very smooth and very shiny And if it's not looking so smooth, go ahead and put it back on the heat. And keep on mixing it until it is perfectly smooth. looking good. Super silky looking. All right. It's mainly air bubbles, but that is looking exactly what we want. Super smooth. <laughs> now, the brown. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold the paper over like so. And with the cloth, I'm actually going to press the brownie down. If you have like a, a thing or a bobber, that will help. What was it? A potato masher thingy, which I still haven't bought. Anyways, what we're doing is we're trying to make it flat. So the corners of the brownie, we're trying to flatten her out as much as possible. Perfect. 
you want it to have like a flat top essentially. Hey, maybe it's not so thick after all. Yeah, I think this is good. It's not too thick now. I'm gonna press it down. Make sure you press it evenly. Perfect. Oops. It's a little bit wet in the center, that's okay. Ah, it's hot. Flat. I'm going to make sure the paper is not folding in on itself. So just make sure you fold it back outwards. Because you don't want the paper to ruin the perfect ganache. Just be very careful with it. The whole point is that pristine ganache. So, just gonna clean off. Just don't wanna risk any of the chocolate crumbs ruining our perfect ganache. All right, we're good. I wish I had. Oh! Perfect. All right, we're good. Okay. Well, there goes that clip. Anyways, <laughs> ganache goes on to the brownie now. best as we can. Making sure we hit the corners. It's not as 
it's a little more rustic than it is smooth and I'm sad. I think it's because I think I should have used a little bit more cream. Just a little bit. Uh, I wonder if, hmm, I could try to torch it slightly, very slightly. I could. Let me try to make it super flat on the top. Looking shinier, but not so much flatter. Okay, maybe we do that. looking how I want. I want it to be completely flat. Okay, guys, we're going to do broiler. No, it's the ratio. I didn't put enough cream. We're going to do a layer of milk chocolate on top. I am, yeah, we need to have it to have that layer. Otherwise, what's the point? It would just be brownies with melted chocolate on top. We're gonna give it a layer of milk. Again, again. white maybe I'll do white for taste I don't got milk chocolate I will do white today I'll use white chocolate this time.
white will look good. Ooh, maybe I'll make some dark chocolate in there. Hopefully that'll work. This works. Hoggers. Hell yeah. That's looking milky. Alright, I like it, I like it. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Alright. The trick is though, we need to make sure it's all mixed because we don't want streaks. We don't want streaks of dark chocolate or white chocolate. We want it to be all evenly one color. Wait, that looks really good. What the heck? Wait, this looks beautiful. That looks so pretty. Okay, now to ruin it with heavy cream. This cream is kind of inting me. All right. Good amount of cream. I'm turning the heat back on. Okay, this is looking so much nicer. Yes, we did it guys. This is this is the texture we're looking for. don't want any air bubbles and I'm seeing it's forming a couple so. okay that is looking good though Thick brownie. Ooh. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of all the bubbles. perfect. Oh my god. <gasps> it's a glass top. It's perfect. Took us a second try, but it's literally a mirror finished top. I love it. I'm going to tap it a couple times. I'm going to use this to get rid of some of the bubbles.
careful not to burn it. All right, that's looking shiny and good. Oh, literally looks like a mirror. I can see myself. <laughs> all right, all right, I like it, I like it. I'm worried about the small bubbles. I'm just being really picky at this point. <laughs> Hi, Pokey. I'm making brownies, but then the brownies has like a, like a, a very, a very flat ganache on top that is very shiny. Yeah, it's just gonna have like a perfect top. But anyways, it is looking gorgeous. Now we just have to wait for it to set in the fridge. Oh my god, right when I said that. Right when I said that. Okay, a little cat hair fell in, but I took it out. Um, where's the skewer? Sorry, I'm being like really picky. I just want to make sure there are no bubbles, you know? You gotta make sure there are no bubbles now because once you put it in the fridge for it to set, it's gonna sit. So I'm just poking at any of the larger bubbles I see. I wonder if I just do this. And that kind of works. Waving it a bit. Oh, that tastes so good. <gasps> Big air bubble coming. Got it. Okay, one more time. Make sure it's super shiny. The more I do this, the more bubbles are gonna show up, to be honest. <laughs> Guys, I wanted to like, it's a mirror right now. You guys see how reflective it is? <laughs> Anyways. All right, we're good. Let's um, put it in the fridge now. We're done, we're done. We're, we're finally done. Ooh. Guys, I don't like it. They're, ugh. You think I should put it in the broiler or something? Cause like I see more bubbles popping up and it's driving me crazy. You think this is a job for the broiler? No? It's not perfect! There are bumps! There are bubbles! Air is coming from the brownies. <sighs> Probably, huh? Because the brownie is still warm. That makes sense, actually. That makes a lot of sense. Because the brownies are still warm. Oh, I should have done it on a set brownie. <gasps> no! It's my fault! Oh, 
Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'll just put it in. Rookie mistake, Aria. Rookie mistake. I've never done it before, guys. I've never put like a ganache on top of a brownie like that before. I'm an idiot. I should have known. I should have known. That's like. That's a rookie mistake. Of course, the brownie is still hot, so then air is still coming out from the brownie. So obviously, if air is coming out from the brownie, it's gonna cause air bubbles. See, like my ganache in the bowl is perfect right now. It is perfectly smooth with not a single bubble. And I was like, why is it on the brownie that it looks like this? I'm so sad right now. How long in the fridge? I don't know. I don't want to see it anymore. <sighs> Guys, literally the ganache in the bowl is absolutely bubble free and pristine. Pour this over when it sets again. Again, you think so? That could be the strap, but I don't know if I have enough left over. I haven't I have enough for like half a brownie. More. <laughs> Guys, this is ridiculous. Just on the ugly parts. There's gonna be more ganache than brownies, yeah, at this point, yeah. Cat up there just chilling. Yeah, more? Hmm. Guys, I give up. You know. This is not happening. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this ganache? This ganache is so yummy looking. What should we do with it, guys? Should I turn it into a truffle? Should I dip something? Try the ganache. That ganache won't last till it sets. Oh. Mmm, yummy. Buki hears people outside. I'm gonna drink my milk. Mm. Yeah, this ganache is so pretty. <laughs> I'm a rookie, guys. I'm a rookie. I'm so upset. I honestly thought the heat of the brownie would help the ganache get smoother because it'll heat up the ganache, but then it, I guess it's too hot, so instead it's creating air bubbles. Time to restart? No, I'm not gonna restart, bruv. Is ganache reheatable, you guys think? I think it is. Because even though this is kind of setting right now, maybe I can reheat it and add it on top of the brownie. Thoughts? Yes? Okay. All right, maybe I will add another layer. Maybe I will add another layer. Hmm. This is enough. Yeah, I don't know if this is enough, guys. <laughs> it's not enough. I don't think it's enough. Spread it with an offset. I could. I could even do the heated offset method. I'm so annoyed. I had such a good ganache going on and then I put it on hot brownie. Drizzle it on? No, then it will look amateur. <laughs> so 
So the whole point of this brownie being very special is that it has like a really flat ganache top. Very flat. Okay. I would check it out one more time. Guys, it's so ugly, I can't look at it. It's just like micro bubbles. It's not, it's like, it's flat for the most part, but it has like these tiny, tiny little bubbles. Like tiny. Guys, I'm telling you. I feel like putting it in the broiler as a strat. Or in the oven. What if I put it in a low temp oven? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put the rest of the ganache on it, and I'm gonna put it in a low temp oven. Oh my god, it looks so much better with the cooled ganache. Wait, wait, maybe this is fine. This looks better. Maybe I fixed it with this with this cooler temperature ganache. Oh, <gasps> the bowl was wet. The bowl was wet. I see water drops. Of course the bowl is wet. Oh my god. I'm mixing the water into it. No guys, it looks better. I swear. Okay, minus the little water droplet there, but I'm being annoying, I know, but hold on. It's possible. This is Guys, I'm telling you, I think the oven is a strat. I'm gonna try an oven. <laughs> yeah, it will it'll heat up the oven, yeah, or it'll heat up the brownie, yes, but what I'm trying to do is I just want it to like get rid of all the air bubbles. Oh yes, close the freezer door too. I love you. Guys, this is happening. I'm going to make it work. Okay, how about I just... There's another thing I can do. How about I pour all the ganache back into the bowl and I start over with the ganache. I think at that rate, it might be better. Okay, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. Tired of beating myself up over this. Okay. That already looks so much better. this is look at this this has no bubbles in it this one 
near the bottom of the brownie. That doesn't make sense. So maybe it was just the ganache having too much air. I don't know. I don't know. I won't try to over mix this ganache. If it was, it just doesn't make sense if it's the heat from the brownie because why is it the chocolate? The chocolate that's by the brownie is like the most smooth right now. Okay, I think I'm just gonna heat the ganache until I see no more bubbles. Cause I think it's the bubbles that's in this ganache currently that's like messing it up for us. Okay. Oof. 
please. I don't know, guys. I'm still seeing it. I'm still seeing the the bubbles. I'm wondering if it's I need to like cool it maybe now. I don't know. Never dealt with such annoying ganache before. It looks good for the most part. I think it's ready. Yeah, the bubbles are not as noticeable for sure. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Should I let it cool a bit? I'm not gonna temper it on my, my, my counter, it's fine. I'm picky, but I think I will survive off of this. This will have to do. I do think it's better. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oops. Just let it sit. Then when do I pour it? Okay, okay, I pour now, I pour now. There's like no bubbles. There's no bubbles, I'm happy with how it looks in the bowl. Okay, 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 here goes. Okay, it's done. We did it, we did it, we did it. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Wait, where's... I'm gonna just stick it in the, the freezer before I hate it. It looks good, it looks good. It's definitely worth it. Less bubbles than before. clap okay okay I'm traumatized I never want to do that again <laughs> so many factors that could have made our life easier like cooling the brownie completely would have been one pogger we don't hate it yeah we don't hate it this time 
it's not perfect, but it is much better than the first time. If I let the first time set, I would probably never forgive myself. So I'm glad that we did redo it. I'm glad. Um, <laughs> Hocus Pocus fan. Oh my gosh, your name is like perfect for the season. Hocus Pocus is a Halloween film, right? Oh my gosh. Speaking of that, hopefully it turns out good. If it doesn't, oh well. Oh well. But um, what time is it right now? Oh, it's 10.53. I think I can fit a couple of Valor games in me before I go to bed. I haven't played Valor in so long. I kind of miss it, to be honest. I was gonna wait for the brownie to set, but I don't know if I have that much time to wait. I would have to sit here for like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Clocking your games, yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, Carbonara was great. Um, brownie, we ran into some hiccups, but that's okay. Cause we fixed it to the best of our abilities. And uh, yeah, we're good with it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and send you guys over to Celine for tonight, but thank you so much. Who taught you how to chef it up? Well, my parents were always in the kitchen teaching me how to do things here and there. And then growing up, I had classes inside and outside of school. But anyways, guys, um, we'll cut into the brownies tomorrow, but in the morning, we'll also do a melon cake stream. So early in the morning, guys, we're talking about like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. is when I'll start the stream. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for that. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the subs today as well. It was really nice to see you guys um, after my long ass break from Just Dance. Uh, we're definitely gonna maybe do that a monthly thing or bi-monthly, like as in every two months, I'll do one because I have to be prepared for the healing, guys. It takes me like three whole days to heal um, from dancing like that. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna hop on Valo, play a couple games, and then see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye. Good night.